that's where the, the Giants fans, as you know, they've been passing around. I say we, because it's not me, though. They have been passing around the Daniel Jones apology forms. Why did you hate on him? And the best one is, to me at least, if I had to check off on Duke quarterback. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It has been far too long, but we are back. It's another great day to discuss other people's excellence. I am known for better than one himself, Mr. Brett Carroll. Charles is always daydreaming in his nice yeah. brand new spot. Yeah, we see you. I'm in my wife's actual seat right now because the, the half of the office that's mine isn't unpacked yet. So good problems, but that, you know, that's why the, the whole new background is not going to be a normal background for me, not my wife's plants. My big head's blocking the plants, but you guys can see it, and you can obviously probably hear a difference besides see a visual difference of where I am right now. So, yeah, well, we're excited. It's been I'm back off my cruise, so we're back to doing pods. Um, and it's been always a, on vacation, bro. Hey, listen, this, this I'm not gonna lie. This is I was just talking about this the other day. Like I've traveled a lot this year, which is weird. Like I haven't. I went from like not traveling to like. When every, have you not traveled? Ah, during the pandemic, I was kind of... Oh, no, well, the whole world was shut down. I didn't really travel a lot. Oh. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. The last two years, I've been kind of, you know, not going anywhere. And then this year... Oh. Boom. I can't uh, believe it. There was a worldwide pandemic. I didn't really travel the world. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, we are back and we are excited. I know this guy is very excited because his giants are killing it right now. Five and one off two quote unquote upset wins. Uh, I'm just gonna let you go ahead and, and do your thing because not just you, but the Jet, but the Jets as well are playing really good football. So if you are a New York football fan right now, you gotta be very excited. So I'm gonna sit back and let you take the floor because this is a long time coming for you. Go ahead. All right. Well, and a peek behind the curtain is we don't got any notes up. Those the last like hour of our lives have been nothing but IT issues. So this is just me being a Giants fan. I don't have anything in front of me. This is all from literally watching every game this season and just the, the raw emotion. As you guys know, when I was coming into the season, I had zero expectations. We we went two and zero, oh, and I was I told Brett like I'm riding this high until it ends. We lost to Dallas. It was obviously a bad loss, not just because it's the Cowboys but because it just, that was the worst we've looked all season, but we bounced right back. And that was uh, Kayvon Thibodeau's debut game. But ever, and ever since then, he hasn't been racking up the sacks like people that only check the box score want to see. But, it, but ever since the Dallas game, the defense has been good. And I know there's been instances where you're like, how's the defense been good? Look what they're giving up. The, the secondary is very raw. Like the safeties, I really like them. Uh, Love and McKinney. And the pass rush is getting there to where the safeties are really able to feast and they're making a big difference. So I really like the defense and every single one of the Giants games this year, every one of the wins have been less than seven points, less than seven points. Think about that. The last like 10 years of New York Giants football has been, we lose close games and then we lose whenever we don't play at one o'clock. So just the fact that Dayball has them going to London and outperforming the Packers. Then he got us coming home and coming back from two scores down. Uh, I put Just reinstalling all the faith that the offense didn't have in themselves last year after Joe Judge, because you saw it in the first game. He's obviously a different coach than Joe Judge, and we didn't want to jump the gun and say, obviously he's better than Joe Judge, even though obviously everyone's better than Joe Judge. And Dable now... Six weeks in, the Giants are five and one, and people are like, oh, you're the worst five and one. We're five and one. Like I didn't have the Giants five and one. Everyone's talking shit. Like I was talking shit this this whole off season. I wasn't. I I had no faith. You take, in the, you take and the five. The Jets played at one o'clock this week. I beat the Ravens, but the Jets have looked good. The defense, uh, Sauce Gardner, man, he looks like the second coming of Dar- Darrell Rivas right now. Like the dude is making plays. All the uh, uh, Paul, the, their running back, making plays. Just the team itself looks good. And the biggest question is, ironically, the quarterback, which isn't a, which is up there. So they're ahead of schedule in regards to the roster, but do they have to go find a quarterback if Zach doesn't start improving? But again, who cares? They're four and two. Like, 
I don't want to sit here and act like, oh, the Jets. No, man, they're four and two. I did not expect the Jets and the Giants to be this good. And I people are this good. Yeah, this good. I didn't expect it from either team. Like, I'm joking, but like, I'm being serious too. I would love to see a New York Super Bowl before I die. And if it was this type of year where both teams are the underdog teams going into it, it might be the most popular Super Bowl of all time. Not saying that's what's going to happen because the Bills and the Chiefs exist on the one end. Like, let's be real. And I, and, and the Eagles look like no joke. I'm not going to sit up here and just be that type of Giants fan and, and not, you know, acknowledge objective reality of who looks amazing right now. So as a Giants fan, this is all just free money. I didn't, we, I didn't expect it. Saquon's been amazing. All you fucking haters that have been talking this whole time about bust this or bust that. Where's the rest of his draft? Because they're not making significant plays and wins the way Saquon is in 2022. Well, besides Josh Allen, but yes. Well, obviously, besides Josh Allen. He's not never compared to Josh Allen. Talk um, about Baker Mayfield. How, how, how are the Panthers doing? They just traded uh, – uh, Robbie Anderson of the Cardinals today. Well, we'll, we'll get to the Panthers dysfunction later. Um, but yes, I, I think it's a great thing. Uh, you know, I get the, I, I well, haters are gonna hate. Worst five and one team ever. Like what? Like whatever. Like you're five and one. Like who cares how you got there? Um, you guys are winning in unconventional ways. Like you said, every game has been less than seven points. I believe this was your first ever t- interception last uh, against Lamar Jackson. So it was the first ever, uh, you were the last team to get a pick this year. So again, unconventional ways that you're winning because it's not like you're taking the ball away. It's not like you're doing plays on de- regular plays on defense. And, and the even offense, Kayvon- it's been ama- the offense, dude. For, for a team that has no weapons besides Saquon Barkley, the way that they make the offense matter. And, and I'll give all credit to Daniel Jones right now. The dude hasn't made mistakes. Well, we exactly what I said I didn't have faith in was he, I didn't have the faith in him to stay healthy and not make mistakes when we needed him to be that guy. And at least four times this season, when the game was on the line, he was exactly who we needed him to be. And he, not only was he making the, the right throws, he would say F it at the right time and use his legs and slide. Don't get me wrong, that kid, I, as you know, biggest critic of his whole career but i've never once called him a bitch like that 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 dude <laughs> stop running and putting your shoulder down we get it you're not a punk we get it the whole world sees it we get it but just just you're gonna get hurt again so so when they got hurt a couple of weeks ago and they had to run the wildcat for a whole series dayball showed just enough imagination on that series because it, they were running it through brita running it through barkley running it through brita they hurried up uh dj was hurt he was he was lining up as a wide receiver all of a sudden they hurry up and he lines up under center and they they forced them to uh, call the timeout never saw that type of imagination from joe judd never saw that type of imagination from the last three smokes like including that uh all the way back to ben McAdoo. pat Shermer didn't see it didn't see it with joe judge day ball for the off season we had to talk about between all the coaches and, and the lack of uh, black coaches in the NFL and all this stuff and the giants getting shit for hiring Dable before, well, before they interviewed everybody, at least the giants in that respect were completely vindicated at this point that they had their guy that they knew they wanted to move forward with because he's been the reason they're winning. Like this, this roster isn't immensely talented, but Holy shit. I, and you've never been a, a Barkley hater, so I'm not, I really don't mean to mean Brett because I know he fucks in the hit round and hates on the Giants, but he's never hated on Barkley as a player because it was not like Brett's like, I can't believe Saquon is healthy and he's just doing all this stuff. Said no one that's actually not a hater. Like the, 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 the QB bros that just hate running backs and think running backs are just a dime a dozen, they don't see the difference that 80 yards from Saquon Barkley actually means in a game. Because when you're chipping away getting four yards, then six yards, then two yards, then 12 yards. Like it, it could be a grind. It's, it's a slug. A lot of people these days, they only want shootouts. And this Giants team is exactly with the exception of uh, the mobility at quarterback, what we wanted to see four years ago when we drafted Saquon Barkley. So having a mobile quarterback now, just it's crazy because who's he throwing to? Like, I didn't think going into this season, my biggest criticism of the Giants offense would be they didn't give Daniel Jones enough help. 
like Kenny Galladay is a bum. Can Man, listen, they, 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 he changed the culture. That's what you want. He changed the culture. They got he has them playing hard every week. He has them believing in themselves every week. To your point, a healthy Saquon Barkley makes a whole lot of a difference because he is a difference maker at the running back position. It's just that simple. Um, and even Kayvon Thibodeau, what I've noticed from him is the box score doesn't show up like he's getting a lot of sacks, but what I've noticed about him is he's clutch. He gets those clutch pressures. He gets those clutch sacks. He gets those clutch fumble recoveries when you like really need it. When you really need a play, that's when he's there. And again, he might not be getting the sacks, but the pressures is what he's been doing the last couple of games at the end of the game, forcing guys to make bad throws. And that's what that's all you could really ask for. Not everybody opening lanes for Dexter Lawrence and then a, a, a returning big cat. So I'm just saying, man, like. He's one of those dudes, and, and, and he's low-key your favorite giant because you were like, oh, my God, if you guys drafted him. Then we drafted him, and you were just annoyed because, like, now I got to cheer for a giant low-key. And, and he's exactly what both me and you, since you told me about him, said, like, no, check him out because since me and you liked his interview when he was an uh, independent thinker, we don't – I know that's an overused term these days, but we, me and you both, like, we're like, oh, good. This dude can actually think. That's actually something we want on our team. And to see it on the field, personality-wise, like the body language he's giving off. Because when he's standing up and he's doing the, the edge rush pressure of a stand-up, the once or twice I've noticed it, they feel it just because it's like, why is he standing up? Because they don't think he's dropping back. That's the craziest part about it. They know he's going to come anyway. But I've noticed how they just focus on it. I guess I'm pointing to my left. So if I'm the, uh, the quarterback – He's getting, they're going to rush from the left, and they just see uh, KT standing there like, yeah, yeah, I'm coming at you. And that just doing that opens the lanes on, on the defensive line and the, the occasional uh, linebacker to get the, 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 the actual pressure on the quarterback. But good Lord, does, does the defense actually look like what I hope they would look like? With the exception of the secondary, which, again, man, didn't expect Love to be a captain as – Putting that C on him gave him superpowers, apparently, because he's he's having a career season so far. And McKinney has been everything that we wanted to see from him so far. The only person that I'm kind of like, dude, you keep getting burned. And this is about three weeks ago, not even the last couple of weeks, is Darnay Holmes, who's more who's supposed to be more of a nickel corner anyway. And he's getting burned deep. So it could just be a system difference now, but he's not getting bent. And the defense is obviously the defense kept us in that game yesterday because Lamar Jackson got a lot of shit for the turnovers, right, late in the game. Rightfully so, they were late game t- turnovers. I've shit on Daniel Jones for, for less. So I get why. But the first half, dude, the defense was just holding them to the field goal or or not letting them get the points because they would move and then they just get that stop once they hit the, a little bit too deep uh, down the field. So the, it's it's been consistent on both sides of the ball to now. We're, we're six weeks in. They've been the same team with the exception of the Dallas game, which again, rival, you know, divisional games, you can just shit the bed in, in the division and, and, and the, your rival will make you eat it. So that, that is what it is. If we can be, if we can just make it even with the Cowboys and make it even with the Eagles, I feel like we could beat the commanders twice. And then holy shit, that's like nine wins. Mm-hmm. I mean, listen, it, it's it's been good. It's been great for both teams. I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, but it, it's been a weird year for New York sports. Just in early July, the Yankees and the Mets were far in first place in both of their conferences or leagues, I should say. And the Mets not only choked away the division, but they lost in the wild card game, uh, wild card round, I should say. And as of this recording, if the Yankees lose tonight, their season's over. So. You know, if you're a New York Jets or Giants fan, enjoy it. Um, enjoy it while But to your point, to your point, the difference between the teams, right? Because as Nets fans, we had to deal with, ironically, the last three years of just disappointment not making it deeper than we have, right? And as Giants and Jets fans, even though I'm not one of the – I love the, the lean on the rings. I know I do. But at the same time – that's an accomplishment. If both New York teams made it to the wild card round this year, and even lost oh, yeah. the wild card round, that's a great season for both teams. Oh yeah, and that's why that's why I was going. Unless both teams just epically collapse and like don't win for the rest of the year, I think whatever happens is going to be a successful that's season. It. That's literally that's the only thing Dable can't do now. You can't just lose out. You, yeah. 
you you can lose mostly everything else, but because you're already built up like nah, let him get his picks in. You know what I mean? That's what the, the Giants fans, as you know, they've been passing around. I say we because it's not me though. They have been passing around the Daniel Jones apology forms. Why did you hate on him? And the best one is to me, at least, if I had to check off one. Duke quarterback. I was like, that's a, I'm like, yeah, that's real. Not gonna lie, that 100. percent I they like the media told me to hate him. I'm like, nah. If he wasn't from Duke, man, if he, if he was from another school, because you you know if he was from Rutgers, I would have been riding with him this whole this whole way. But he was from Duke, and I, immediately I was like, you know, fucking Duke quarterback's good in the National <laughs> Football League. And here I am, six weeks in, and I'm not ready to apologize. Fuck that. Let, let us make the playoffs. Let him get a win. And well, then I, I, t- I told you after you were two and zero, oh, y'all gonna have to resign him because the way you're playing now. Um, Rex Ryan said this morning, y'all could go nine and one in your next four very easily winnable games. You're going to play yourself out of getting a quarterback in this draft. So you're probably going to have to at least franchise them. And, you know, so hopefully no, if we don't franchise them, uh, they were floating around this is a couple of weeks ago. We know the NFL is especially with negotiations and paying quarterbacks, but they were talking about doing like a $25 million deal over two or three seasons. And is that like Daniel Jones could look at it like, I mean, F that franchise tag me because that could just be that one payday, that one year. Or he could say, hey, next four seasons, we pay you 30 mil. X is guaranteed over the course of the four years, but it's it's a year to year, essentially. Because you know how they break up the, if you're not a star, they can just do whatever they want with your money. Right. So, well, yeah, I mean, listen. I don't think I just don't think it's oh Max the, like you know how fans are no 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 I don't think, Max for a Max I don't think that with the franchise that. tag and that's it yeah I don't think they're dumb enough to do that but my point is for a lot of Giants fans including you that were so dumb with him I think you're probably going to see him around for at least another year because you're going to have keeps, if he stays healthy and he keeps playing like this he did exactly I'm being serious. I don't, I'm don't. i trying to be objective and not be that guy that's just mad I was wrong about something. Because I told you the whole time, I hope I'm wrong. Like, prove me wrong, dude. So if he keeps playing like this, and he plays every single game, he plays the whole season, he would have done everything that I said I need him to do for me to want him to stay around. I don't, I, I'm still, I'm not a, 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 like in love with him yet. I don't want to, to be like, oh, yeah, we're definitely keep No, if we got a better option, look, go with him. Because Dayball has shown me, look what he can do with Daniel Jones. No offense to Daniel Jones, but Daniel Jones looked like a XFL quarterback with Joe Judge. And, and Pat Shermer, he was, you know, like, I'm not trying to judge a dude off his rookie year. You know what I mean? But it's it's like, I don't know, man. He's, I, I, just, I, I don't know how much, this is one of those things where, if they fuck around and did the, the Eli Manning thing, right? Fourth year, they win the Super Bowl. Literally the most extreme good, right? Not only, fuck it, I don't care what you do. We just won the Super Bowl, honestly, just number one. But but if, if we're having that conversation, it's just a crack pipe version of, is it the coach? Is it the quarterback? You know what I mean? Because let's be real. Like, I still wouldn't be like, oh, well, obviously the talent of Daniel Jones. But I try to do the what we mean you do for a lot of black quarterbacks at the same time, because there's a factor of if Daniel Jones was some random black kid from HBCU would have these same numbers. He would have a lot more, a different, I shouldn't say a lot more. He would have a different contingency of fans that are just hoping he would click. Right. I think the Duke aspect really works against him. So I do try to take that off of it and look at how he plays. And if he plays like this and keeps playing healthy, he is the mobile quarterback I want. So it's a, so it's, it's a catch-22 for me because my problems were all the problems I didn't see the growth on. And if, if I didn't see the growth on it, I didn't see the growth on it because the coaches were shit. And now Dayball's here, and, and Daniel Jones is just rushing in for multiple touchdowns in uh, London. And fun fact, didn't realize the first uh, touchdown scored in a London game was Eli rushing the ball in, which is just – random football history for everybody a glitch in the matrix bro that is I, I lived it. me and you were around it was like 2007 2008 like we watched that game and it's just crazy to, to be like wait say that again is that real like I, I was here for it and i still was like and i'm an eli fan <laughs> so like that yeah, doesn't glitch, sound real glitch in the matrix somebody accidentally put a copy paste 
But no, I was pretty <laughs> No, then it happened, and then it glitched twice uh, two weekends ago, and Daniel Jones ran it in the same way twice, and it was just like, it was like, damn, this this sim just fucks up every time we play in London. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, just, it's a bug. It's a bug. But yeah, um, but yeah, I, like I said, I, I'm I'm not gonna hate on it. I'm happy for Jets fans. I'm happy for Giants fans. This is awesome. Like again, going into the year, you guys were tied for the worst record over the last five years. So like, the, you know, the payment is due at some point. Um, believe it or not, I don't want to see teams be ass for like the entirety of their existence. That is depressing as fuck. So th- except this- for the Browns, Brent hopes the Browns suck for. Oh yeah, they, they deserve to be in perpetual hell. But uh, but you know but and the Cowboys, I, I really hope the Cowboys are terrible forever. The Eagles too. Fuck both of y'all. Like I, I, spe- I, I well speaking of that, there's now the question of oh is this the best division in football? Because again, you have the six and zero Eagles, you have the five and one Giants, you have the four and two Cowboys. And and this you know, the jokes were made NFC lease and yeah, NFC all the jokes were made by you. Eat the crow, Brett. Eat the crow. Uh, I did not come up with NFC least. You didn't come up with it, but you said it to me enough times in, uh, over the last year. So I just want you to eat that crow. Wait, are, are your Steelers in playoff contention? Yeah, technically, yeah. We're a game out of first place in the, in the division. Oh, God. So, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but oh. with that being said, I'm not ready to say they're the best division in football for one reason and one reason only. You guys, this whole division literally has the easiest schedule in football. And so you guys are beating up on teams that you're supposed to beat. The Ravens and the Packers, are, I'm going to give you credit for that. Although the Packers aren't playing well and neither are the Ravens, you still play who you play, you beat who you beat. So I'm going to get – so it's a weird thing. I'm going to acknowledge that the Giants, Cowboys, and Eagles are good. I'm going to give them their credit because you have to – you play who you play, you beat who you beat. But I'm not ready to say they're the number one division yet because they've uh, – and and to be fair, all the losses have come against each other. You know, you guys lost to the Cowboys, the Cowboys lost to the Eagles, and obviously the Cowboys lost the first game of the season. Um, and obviously the Eagles are undefeated. So to be fair, it is proven that you guys are the best of the teams that you're playing because you guys have all just lost to each other and haven't lost to anybody else yet. Um. With that being said, it does say something when the whole division has the, you know, first, second, third, and fourth easiest schedules in all of football. And for people that don't understand how that works, 95% of it is the schedule, or I'm sorry, is the record of the team you're playing. The other 5% of it is how good they think your team is. So a lot of times, like when people look at the Patriots um, in the Tom Brady years, so it's not fair. They always have like one of the easiest schedules in the league. But that's because they're always favored in every game. So obviously their strength of schedule is going to go down because they're comparing the team they're playing to the team they're facing. So for for the NFL schedule makers to say the Eagles, Cowboys, Cowboys, uh, the, the, the whole division has the easiest schedule, that just shows how bad some of the teams were playing that were playing you guys, that they were still like, yeah, they, they could probably win a lot of these games. So – you know, like I said, I'm not going to say they're the best division yet, but I'm also going to give them their props and saying, hey, listen, it doesn't matter who you face. You you play to win the game and you guys are winning. So, like I said, I, I it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. I do think the Eagles are for real. That defense is for real. That, out, that offense is for real. Um, some of the Cowboys and the Giants stuff, we'll see how that plays out. But, again, you know, it, it, you ride high, ride high. Y'all deserve it. Um, it's, it's about damn time, and we'll see what happens. Um, moving on to my team, we finally got a win, and I, I'm <laughs> a, and I'm already hearing people say, "Oh my god, this is why Mike Tomlin's so great." The defense was in shambles, blah 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 blah, and he pulled out this win, blah 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 blah. Yes, he did. I will give him credit; that is his superpower. When you seem to be at your darkest day, he finds a way to get the team to, to rally together and see the light and overcome whatever is going on against it. Great. I'm still of the mindset, my time, we should be five and one, because, but you keep fucking up. I'm still of that mindset. The Bills blowout, that, that was a blowout. No matter what happened, that was a blowout. We don't go 0-3 against the Jets, Patriots, and Browns if you would have started Kenny Pickett. We just don't. But because you gave Mitchell Trubisky your word that he was going to be the starter 
And you know, I was a defender of Mr. Trubisky. You know that I'm, I'm not apologizing for that, but I'm also acknowledging who the hell was Mr. Trubisky that you guys, you were defending so adamantly just a few short weeks ago. I'm, and I'm still defending him, but at this, but I'm also realistic to say, who is Mr. Bisky to give him your word that he was going to be the starter? That doesn't make sense. This isn't Russell Wilson. This isn't Aaron Rodgers. This isn't Deshaun Watson. Some of the other, you know, big name quarterbacks that were rumored to be going to different places, even though Aaron Rodgers stayed in Green Bay. This is Mr. Bisky. Matter of fact, your Giants were the only other team that even wanted him. Yep. So for them to give him give him their word that he was going to be the starter, I think was a mistake because he didn't earn that. Not to mention the moment you drafted Kenny Pickett, you have to play Kenny Pickett. I'm sorry. You have to play him for no other reason. You took away from the defense, as you know, and as the people that have been watching my mock drafts last year, I didn't want us to draft a quarterback. If you went inside, if you went inside Mr. Trubisky, stick with Mr. Trubisky. We had more needs on defense than a quarterback right now. But you didn't take one. You took Kenny Pickett. And so because of that, you have to play. You can't have a first-round pick sitting on the bench not helping your team when your team has this many needs. And we see it. Our quarter, our corners are in shambles. We still need some linebacker help. We still need some defensive line help. We still need another safety. All of those things you could have drafted in the first round. Jaquan Brisker, safety, been playing really well for the Bears. He was there at 20. Andrew Booth, corner, playing really well for the Vikings. He was there at 20. Uh, Kyer Elam, corner for the Bills, was there at 20. Didn't take him. I could go on and on and on. You took a quarterback. And not only did you take a quarterback, we saw it in the preseason. Because as, as you know, as much as I was vouching for Mitch Trubisky, once the preseason started, I said, oh, hell no, you got to play Kenny Pickett. The offense is moving with Kenny Pickett. And so once that happened, I'm sorry, Mitch, plans change, bro. I believe them when they say they didn't think he would be there at 20. I, I get that. No, and, and that's rare in today's age that the first quarterback doesn't get taken to 20 to the 20th pick. But guess what? He was there. You picked him. You got to play him. You got to play him. And Mr. Bisky played scared. He played intimidated. And I don't blame him. I'm not even mad at him for it because that's an impossible position to be in. You know, fuck an interception. You know, the moment you throw an incompletion, everybody's going to be can he, can he, can he. And even on Sunday, Mitch came in, Kenny got hurt, Mitch came in, and he played so much better than those first couple weeks. Why? Because there was no pressure on him. He could come in. He knew Kenny was out for the game. He knows nobody in their right mind wants Mason Rudolph to come into the game. And he played loose. He played free. He played with some fucking confidence. He played more aggressively. I'm like, oh, wow, look at that. You look like an actual quarterback when you don't have this mountain of pressure on your shoulders to be perfect. And so, again, instead of being two and four, we should be five and one. And like I said, and I said it from the beginning of the year, and this is why it's pissing me off, there, there's still nine wins on our schedule. There are still nine wins on our schedule. And you don't believe – no, no, hold on. We're going to lose to the Eagles uh, two weeks from now. That's just – I want my milkshake, Brent. I want my milkshake. Hey, listen, you better be brewing mine because we still have nine wins on our schedule. We're going to lose to the Eagles. But let's say we pull this one out on Sunday because it's Tua's first game back. We don't know how they're going to look, right? Okay, so we'll be three and five after the next two weeks. You still have Carolina. That's a winnable game. You still have Atlanta. That's a winnable game. You're still at home against the Saints. That's a winnable game. You, I'm sorry, dude. You, you, The way you guys are based off this season, isn't Atlanta just that much better of an offense than you? Like just saying that really wise, no, not really. Their offense has been hit or miss too. They, you guys haven't been hit, huh? You guys haven't been hitting. There, it's not like the, the the Steelers' offense. It's like, oh wow, this the offense is so good, but you know, you guys are just losing games. You guys haven't looked good. So, so just to assume that you guys are the wins that you have wins ahead of you, especially with like. Well, I said that's why I said winnable games. I'm not guaranteeing anything. I'm saying there's there's still. Even at, even if we go three and five, there's still six very winnable games on our schedule. And if we go and if we win them, everybody's gonna say, "Oh my God, Mike Tomlin, he did it again. He did it with a rookie quarterback. He did it with so. a defense Rightfully that was injured." So. 
Rightfully so. No, no, because we're oh, celebrating. Hell, Mike no. Tomlin. We're celebrating mediocrity at this point, and I'm oh my sick. God. Of it. No, bro, bro, it's been ten years, dude, and this is. And here's the thing: it's, it's not that he has a winning season his whole career. He just hasn't had a losing one. There's a lot of eight and eight sprinkled. Yeah, there's no more eight and eight in the league. What I'm saying is, huh? There's no, there's no such thing as eight and eight no more. I know, but that's my point. Season, you know? So okay, but my point is, if we go nine and eight this year and we barely make the playoffs or or barely miss the playoffs, like I said from from the jump, people are going to celebrate Mike Tomlin, and I'm going to say, bro, we left three wins on the board. Which, like I said in our last pod, and you and you yelled at me. I said, bro, you could have won twelve games this year. The Jets, the Patriots, the Jets, the Patriots, and the and the Browns. Those were, those were three winnable games. You lost all of them by less than a touchdown with Mitch Trubisky and a no and an offense that wasn't doing shit. No, I agree. I just think to go back, to, to, it's more Jets props than Steelers hate. That like the Jets played better. Like and and I get and that goes to your whole point about the coaching. I'm just saying like, but like I just don't think that that's a. Oh, if Kenny Pickett was in, you definitely win that. And with the well, Patriots, and I'm not saying we go. I'm not saying we go three and zero, but I'm saying we're definitely not going zero and three in those games. Yeah, but, but, I, but you still you're one one and two then because like. The, no, I, no, I think I we. Said, I said you ain't winning the Bears the past. I said it when you're doing your win loss game over the summer, and I if said Kenny it, Pickett is playing that game, where, bro. Our offense was horrible, and we still only lost by less than a touchdown. Our offense only couldn't even. Our offense couldn't even move with Mr. Trubisky. He was playing scared, and that's what I'm saying. It. It's Mike Tomlin destroyed this season in the preseason when he preordained Mitch Trubisky as a starter. And I and here's another thing Mike Tomlin's not understanding. He has veterans on defense that have been to war with him and have seen, well, shit, at this point, they haven't seen the mountaintop with him, but they but they've seen the heights of him. This offense is young and they have and they haven't seen the greatness of Mike Tomlin. And so he had to put Kenny Pickett in when he did because he was going to lose that locker room. That offense was, was about to com- complete mutiny. And even after our win yesterday, there's video of Matt Canada, our offense coordinator, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Brian uh, and Chris Boswell, our fucking kicker of all things, said, it wasn't because of you. I hope you know that. So that, our, our whole offense still has a mutiny against their coaching staff because they know – Bro, we have so much talent on offense because you guys so care so much about the and not any of, don't give any crap about the offense. You're limiting what we can do. I mean, it's insane the amount of weapons we have on offense, and we're not and we're not moving the ball. That's just not that's insane. Daniel Jones wishes he had our our fucking bro. I'm telling you right now, if Daniel Jones had our weapons with Brian Dayball, y'all be undefeated. If if y'all had our weapons. I'm telling you right now, but like, we had yeah, two of your weapons. We don't even need all of them. We just need two of them. Like, come on, man! And we, you can pick the two. You pick the two. Just right. Do it. We'll do it randomizer. Like, like, you give us the three and, and four. You rank them. I'll just take three and four. Whatever three and four is, I'll take them. And it's just like, bro, like, and and and, and that's where I'm just getting frustrated with Mike Tomlin and his staff because. He keeps talking about the standard is the standard. Is the standard mediocrity at this point? Because that's what that's what that's what I'm expecting. And I'm at a point now, I'd rather give you a milkshake and lose out. Because fuck it. I, give me, give me Will Anderson. Give me another pass rusher next to TJ Watt. Give me the high draft picks that we can use on our defense so that next year we have the best defense in the league. Because we have good players. We have three great players. The rest of them are just eh. So we need more talent on defense. Give me, but, but again, I know my team. We're going to overachieve and play ourselves out of getting a, 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 a difference maker on defense. And I'm going to be pissed because it's like, bro, is this what we're going to be every year for the next decade now that we have Kenny Pickett? We're going to be nine and eight every year. Like, you, like bro, like, you, you should like, hope. No, man, no. I've seen it for a decade now. So we're trying to get Super Bowls, bro. We're trying to get Super Bowls. I'm, I'm not, I'm not. This barely making the playoffs, losing in the first round shit. That's just done. I'm it sick. Is. Probably, not, probably not making the playoffs. Yeah, but that's why I put either barely making or barely missing the playoffs. Like, who gives a fuck? Like, I'm trying to win Super Bowls. And again, I like Kenny Pickett. I think he's going to be our future quarterback. I'm okay with that. But then guess what? Do better decision making on your part 
invest in your offense so that you can score the ball. Our defense is playing our hearts out, bro. bro I'm not going to lie. That was an inspired win on, on Sunday. I should be very happy with that win. Our defense played their ass off. Literally everybody on the defense. And you guys played the Bucs, Bucs, correct? Yeah. Literally everybody not named Cameron Hayward was hurt. No Minka, no TJ Watt. No, like everybody was hurt. After after you make your Steeler point, you got to change subject, but I, I, I don't got that much more time left, right? And I wanted to ask you this, and I'm happy you said it because I, I forgot who you guys played. Do you think this is the end of the line for Tom Brady? Like, like he's actually done, done now. And the same question goes for Aaron Rodgers. Are they? Is this the end of their respective? It's it's Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, and I feel like we can add Russell Wilson. That we might be looking at. This is the end of this version of them. No, Aaron Rodgers. No, the other two. Yes, I'll just keep it simple. Aaron, Aaron Rodgers, no, because I think once he develops some chemistry with the wide receivers, they'll be fine. They're just young. And and Green Bay, like, what is wrong with you? Get a fucking receiver in the first round. I don't understand this 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 ego clash between the two, where it's like, no, we refuse to give you legitimate weapons. Make it work with these guys. Well, I mean, and all Aaron Rodgers is asking is like, bro, like, this was once again a very heavy draft for wide receivers. We had two first round picks. It would have killed you to trade up and get somebody. It would have killed you to get a Chris Olave or something like that. Like, like really? If I if I know I got to deal with rookie receivers anyway, it would have killed you to take some of these guys. Like, I don't understand why we're waiting till the end of the second round every year end of the third round every year to take a receiver. Like, that's just – Well, I understand, you know, F the Packers. Who cares? Okay. We had some technical difficulties. Um, and Charles has a meeting to go to. So, we're – I'm just going to finish up by myself. Um, we want. I want to talk about the Panthers anyway. That's more of my thing than his thing anyway. So, it's all good. So the Panthers fired Matt Rule after going one and four. Steve Wilkes lost his first game as an interim coach. They're now one and five. Robbie Anderson not only got kicked out of the game um, on Sunday for just going at it with coaches, but also uh, got traded today to the Cardinals. Trade to the Cardinals, which was a good move for the Cardinals because Marquise Brown seems to have a foot injury that's going to keep him out for about six weeks. Um, they get a 2024 sixth round pick and a 2025 seventh round pick. Nothing crazy, but whatever. Here's my thing. This, to me, is all on the owner, David Tepper. David Tepper bought the team a couple years ago. He was at the time the richest owner in the NFL. It's now belongs to the Walmart family that bought, I don't know what the name of the actual family is, but they own Walmart that bought the Broncos. And to me, he boxed the situation from day one because the first thing he did was he didn't re-sign Cam Newton. He fired Ron Rivera. Um, we believed that they were going to just tear this thing down to the studs and start over because he brought in Matt Rule on a seven-year deal, and Matt Rule was a college coach who had never coached in the NFL at any level before or at any capacity, I should say, before. Um, but he had turned around Temple. He had turned around Baylor. He was supposed to be a culture creator, a culture setter, a program rebuilder. And so it made sense if you bring him in on a seven-year deal, you're going to tear it down to the studs, rebuild for the first three years and then expect to win years four through seven and beyond. But that's not what they did. They decided that they believed that they could win now. They believed that the quarterback and the coach was the problem and that Matt Rule would fix the coaching and that a veteran quarterback would fix, fix the quarterback issues. And it just didn't happen. They brought in Teddy Bridgewater, and he didn't win. Then they traded for Sam Darnold. And I was a big component of it. I thought it was a good move. I thought it was, you know, low risk, high reward move. And that backfired completely. Um, and then this year they traded for Baker Mayfield and Baker Mayfield has been terrible. And then, like I said, Matt Rule after going one and four got fired. The team is now one and five. 
and looks to be on a crash course for a top three pick in the draft, which is probably a good thing because obviously they de- they desperately need a quarterback. This will allow them to, to draft either C.J. Stroud or Bryce Young or whoever they like in the draft this year and potentially have their quarterback of the future. Um, the reason why David Tepper, to me, botched this from the jump is because, like I said, when I thought he came in, he was coming in to rebuild the culture, reestablish what they wanted to do, break it down to build it back up. He didn't do that. He thought that this was a win-now team. He thought that this was a team that just needed minor patches in it and they could be winning. And I get why he thought that. He looked at the roster and said, hey, we got talent. Like I said, they re-signed Christian McCaffrey. They re-signed DJ Moore. I understand the thought process. Um, But obviously that was short-sighted. It was also short-sighted to give an unproven head coach a 10-year deal. I mean, a seven-year deal. This wasn't even John Gruden where you gave him a 10-year deal because you have history with him, because he's a quote-unquote great football mind, because he's won at the highest level in the NFL. This wasn't even that. This was a guy that proven that he's a really good college coach. I mean, I'll, I'll be the first one to admit, if I'm Rutgers, I might consider bringing him in, even over Greg Schiano. Um I know Rutgers fans are probably going to put my head on a spike for saying bad things about Greg Schiano, but still, Matt Rule's a guy I would consider to, to hire if I was a college team. Um, but as an NFL team, it didn't make sense to give him that much time and that much money when he's never done this before. And I get that that's probably what it took to get him to come to the NFL ranks. But then I'm a firm believer in when you commit to somebody, commit to them. Or if you're not going to commit to them, don't commit to them. And to me, the one thing I hate the most is the term hot seat coach. To me, it's the stupidest thing you could do. If I don't like you, or not that I don't like you, but if I don't think that you're doing a good enough job and I think that, hey, you know, I'm probably going to fire you, but you got to win X enough amount of games in order to change my mind. To me, that's just not like logical. And that's what the Panthers did. There was rumblings after his first year that David Tepper wasn't really happy with what he was doing. There was certainly rumblings after year two. And so to me, this is why they made some of the moves that they made, uh, made a lot of trades, uh, mess up a lot of draft capital, mess up a lot of salary cap capital to try to put these moves together in order to win now when in reality, unless they were winning a bunch of games, they were going to get fired anyway. Because by the way, they also fired the defensive coordinator and I think they fired somebody else. So to me, it did make sense. If you didn't like them, cut your losses. If you're going to fire him midway through year three and give up $40 million, you should have cut him after year two. If it was that bad, you should have cut him after year two. Because then some of this stuff would not have happened. Instead, you let this guy compromise not only your ability to win now, but really your ability to win going forward. Because again, some of, there's already been trades made that have cap that have compromised your ability to draft players. And so a lot of people think there's going to be a fire sale. Like I said, Robbie Anderson already got traded. And that, to me, that's not even a great trade. A fifth-round pick. What did I say? A seventh, a sixth-round pick, not even in this year's draft, but next year's draft. And a seventh-round pick, two drafts from that. So you didn't even get good compensation for Robbie Anderson, who I get it is not a superstar wide receiver. But, man, you couldn't have gotten at least a fifth-round pick this year for him? You couldn't have done that? You were that, you know, quick to get rid of him that that's what you wanted to do. To me, that just didn't make sense. Apparently, they're hearing offers for Christian McCaffrey as they should. Again, this is probably the time to break it all down again. They have a lot of young players. The the Panthers are weird. They're weird because when you look at their roster, you do think, man, if they just got a good quarterback, they could be pretty good. They got weapons. Well, now that Robbie Anderson's gone, they need more weapons outside of DJ Moore. But they have Christian McCaffrey. They have DJ Moore. They have some young, really good players on defense. This is a team that, yeah, 
if they have the right offseason, they can really turn this thing around. So you need a good coach, you need a good quarterback, and you got to draft well. And to, and to be fair to them, they've drafted pretty well, especially on the defensive side of the ball with a lot, during the Matt Rule era. Um, but like I said, this is on David Tepper, man. I think he, I think he botched this from the beginning. I think that he was very short-sighted in where this team was at. He was muddling in rebuild and win now. Uh, and then he made a commitment that made no sense. You don't give up somebody that's never done this before seven years. And if you are, you got to give him more than two years to figure it out. That's just me. If I'm going to give an inexperienced coach seven years, a seven year deal, I'm a firm believer in whatever you give that person, give them the majority of the contract. If I gave you a, a three-year deal, I should give you two years to figure it out. If I gave you a four-year deal, I should give you three years to figure it out. If I give you a seven-year deal, I'm sorry. I'm not even thinking about firing you until year four. And I understand sometimes you got to cut your losses. I get that. But to me, when you give somebody seven years, you're sending the wrong, them the wrong message. You're sending them the message of, hey, I'm going to give you a few years to figure this thing out. Not two years in, I'm like, nah, I don't want to do this anymore. That's that's a waste of your time and money, literally, and their time and money, literally, and the team's roster, literally. I don't think he's making these moves if he truly believed he had seven years to figure this out. The draft capital would not have been spent on a Sam Darnold, on a, a Baker Mayfield, on a Matt Corral even, all guys that are hurt right now and all guys that we, I think we at least this point know that aren't going to be the future of the franchise. Even Matt Corral, I'm, you know, I wasn't that big on him in the draft anyway. I know some people, you know, will always say give him a chance, but he has durability issues. He's, he's very small. Uh, well, Offense they ran in college. I don't know if it's going to work in the NFL. So really, besides the quote unquote raw talent potential, there's nothing that tells me he's going to be a good NFL quarterback. And I'm sorry, I already did that with the whole Sam Darnold thing. I'm not going off of raw potential anymore. Show me what you got. And so they're going to need a quarterback. And again, that's a lot of draft capital spent on three quarterbacks that you already know aren't your future. Terrible mismanagement. Uh, I, I feel for my fellow Panthers fans. Hopefully they get this right. This is a huge offseason. I'll probably do a whole video. As a matter of fact, I will do a whole video on what I think they should do, but I won't do that till later in the season. Um, there's already speculation about who they, who they are going to go after, who they should go after, stuff like that. But I'll save that for another video. For now, this has been another episode. We appreciate you guys. Sorry about the technical difficulties, especially our first day back in a month. Really sorry about that. This, it wasn't even our fault. The, the technical difficulties today have been insane, to say the least. Um, it was a miracle that we even were able to record today with all the technical difficulties that we were having today. But yeah, you can find me at Never For Bright Me. That's N-E-V-A underscore the number four B-R-E-T-T underscore M-E on Instagram and Twitter. You can find Charles on Not The, Ch Not the Chuck D on all the socials. You can find us on The Underscore Dope Blog on Instagram. The Dope Blog on one word on Twitter. Our website is the dope dot blog. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please like, share, and subscribe. We appreciate it. Join us next time as we continue to discuss other people's excellence. Deuces.